All right, what up, y'all? I'm finna learn you how to set the valves on one of these old Yanmar tractors. Check it out. All right, so I got this big old socket, one in 13, 16, so I'm using it to rotate the engine over. Um, I'll put links in the description. I got that one down at Tractor Supply. But what you need to do is rotate the engine over somehow. Yours is gonna be different. It's gonna have a battery and a radiator here, but I'm rebuilding it, so all that stuff's off. So I've been using this to turn the engine over. Let's go to the next step. So if you look right here, you'll see this. This is a timing pointer, and it's got a V notch in it, right? And this uh, pulley has a bunch of little notches in it. Let me show you. These are top dead center marks. Top dead center, cylinder one, cylinder one. Top dead center, cylinder two, cylinder two. These other marks on here like that one that's almost lined up are for the injector timing. We don't need that right now. All right, so you see cylinder two is lined up with the notch right there. Come up to cylinder two. This one's not that loose. This one's really loose because I had to do new valves uh, on this thing. All right, so I have my injectors off. It's easier for me to tell, but it's blowing out here. You know, that means it's on the compression stroke and it's blowing out here. It means it's on a compression stroke. It says in the manual where there is compression. So you gotta find it for both of them if you want this thing to be accurately set. Let's take a look at the book. All right, here's the book right here. Cylinder one, flywheel side, just like I was telling you. Set, set the top dead center, check the valve clearance, thickness gates, six thousandths of an inch, 0.15 millimeters is inserted. You set one side to top dead center, adjust them, rotate it, set the other side, adjust them. Let's give it a shot. All right. Cylinder two, right there. You can feel it blowing on your finger. That's at the compression stroke. Let's adjust the valves. All righty, we're still on cylinder two. Here's my feeler gauge, six thousandths. Yeah, that one's not too bad, but this one is like an eighth of an inch. You can see, like, that ain't gonna cut it. Let's adjust them. All right, let's find cylinder one. All right, right there, compression stroke, top dead center. Okay, cylinder one's lined up. Let's adjust the valves. All right, now we need to adjust the decompression lever. So let's give that a shot. <sighs> All right, we're almost done. It's time to decompress while we set the decompression lever. Okay guys, so there's a lot of confusion I've been reading online and on my comments and stuff about the decompression system on these tractors. So basically, all it does is it just holds the exhaust valves open a tiny little bit to let a little bit of compression out because the engine has, you know, 500 to 650 psi compression and it can be hard to start so when you pull the lever out then it makes it so that it's easier to start because it lets some of the compression out through the exhaust i hope that clears some stuff up let's get this thing fully adjusted all right here's the procedure right here you can pause it if you need to let's give it a shot pull the decompression lever all the way out all right so make sure to adjust this cable right here to uh, make sure that this thing goes as far as it can out and as far as it can in, you know, so you don't get a false reading. 
just adjust it with that little nut right there to make sure that it goes to the full extent of its throw both ways. You can see I've already done that. It's not going any further. Okay, so you want to make sure everything's torqued down, so this needs to be torqued down. You need to make sure you have your new gasket, you know, squished down in there so that it's all set to the right height because um, this is a really final adjustment here. But you can see the caps are off, and we can get in there and adjust it. And we're going to be adjusting these little screws right there. Okay, top dead center cylinder one. All right, so if you're having a hard time seeing if it's just touching, what I've done is I've got this super thin feeler gauge and I've jammed it down in there and tightened it down on it. And then I'm gonna back the nut out just a little bit and pull the feeler gauge out. That way we know it's just touching. Same deal, lightly touch and then 360. 180, 360. Tighten the nut. Ugh. All right, she's tight. All right, so top dead center, cylinder two. So this one's at top dead center, compression, both the valves are closed. All right, so you loosen this nut. All right, so what we're gonna do is back the screw out. Don't let it fall on the engine, don't go too far. And then we're gonna screw it until it lightly touches the top of the valve rocker arm right there. Then we're gonna go 360. So 180, 360, right there. And then we're just gonna tighten this nut. Tighten that nut down and go on to the next one. So you probably need a little baby that wrench like this to get in there so you can tighten it down and hold it with the screwdriver at the same time. Put your new gaskets on and both the caps back down. Pull the decompression lever all the way out. And then we're gonna rotate the engine around a couple times by hand just to make sure that it, the valves do not contact the tops of the pistons. All right guys, here's the old valves out of this tractor. Let's stop and take a look at them for a second here. Here's an old exhaust valve. You can see it's not very good. It's cupping pretty bad. So you can see it's thin on the edge right there where it was seating. Uh, not good. Definitely make sure your valves and your tractor don't look like this. This one isn't that bad, but it was the worst of all of them. Here's an intake valve. It doesn't look too bad, but I think I tried to lap this one. You can see it's pretty uniform. It doesn't look too bad, but I went ahead and replaced them all anyways. So if you're replacing the valves, in your tractor, you also want to replace this stuff too. Let me show you. Right here, this is the old valve spring, old seat, two old keepers, and an old uh, seal because uh, you want to replace this stuff because it's like 40 years old. So the spring especially goes bad, right? Over time, it sags. So I just went ahead and replaced all this, all the valve guides, all the valves, and had the valve seats remachined by a professional machinist that way Everything in the valves is good. All right, y'all, that's it for the video. I hope it demystified some stuff for you. We got the valve set. We got that decompression lever adjusted. Now all we got to do is finish putting back the rest of the stuff on the engine. And um, make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss out on the full rebuild video. I'll put it up here somewhere or down in the description. I'll check y'all on the next one later.